Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome back to J. Crew. This is another beautiful day that God has blessed us with to come together and study another portion of his word. Boys and girls, I pray that you have had a blessed, good week. And as we get ready to go into the next lesson, boys and girls, I pray that you will open up your hearts to receive the word of God so that it can begin to change and transform your life. Yes, that is the word of God. Its purpose is to change and to transform by the renewing of your mind. In other words, boys and girls, if you continue to actually um, focus in and study the word of God, it will begin to start um, changing your mind from the things of this world to the things of God. And that is his desire, boys and girls, for us to start thinking differently and not continue to actually conform to the ways of this world, doing the foolish things out there in the world, thinking it's funny and all of those things. No, that is not what God expects as far as his children. And he has standards for his household and it's the standards are in the word of God and if you love him you will obey his commands amen amen so boys and girls what we're going to do is we're going to pray and go right into the word for today amen amen let us pray father we thank you thank you for your love your grace and your mercy thank you dear lord for life thank you for all of the things that you supply to us, dear Lord, so that we can sustain life here on this earth. We thank you for the food that you bless us with, the clothes that you bless us with, the roof over our heads. We thank you for the schools that you bless us with, dear Lord. We thank you for the wonderful parents that are training and raising up the children, dear Lord. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and the future that you hold for each one of us. Bless in a mighty way, dear Lord, as we go into your word. Open up our hearts and minds, dear Lord, that we will actually receive your word as seed planted into our hearts that produces roots and bear much fruit as we go forth dear lord practicing your word seeing how powerful your word truly is and how it can transform our lives and not only our lives but as we let our light so shine others may see what we do and they too may ask what must i do to be saved Lord, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. Bless this time that we have together. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. So boys and girls, we're going to pause for a moment and then go right into the word. Amen. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, now we're getting ready to go into the message for today. And as we prepare to go into the message for today, there will be scriptures that we'll be referencing. As a matter of fact, we'll be sharing a story. And the story is coming from Matthew chapter four. And we're going to be talking about the temptations. Yes, we're going to be talking about the temptations, not the temptations, the group, but the temptations, those things that draw us away from God that causes us sometimes to sin. Amen. Amen. So boys and girls, as we start along the way, let us first say this, boys and girls, it takes a lot of nerves to stand up to an enemy. In other words, someone pushing us around, someone tempting us, someone try to entice us to do certain things that we don't want to do. It takes a lot of nerves to say no. It takes a lot of nerves to say stop it. But here's the thing. When the enemy sees us at our weakest, he will try to push us around and bring us down. He will tempt us with those things that displease God. That is what the enemy does, boys and girls. And who is the enemy? The enemy is the devil. And what he tries to do is he tries to tempt us. And we must have something on the inside, boys and girls, to fight the temptations or we will lose. If we don't have anything inside to fight the temptations that comes our way, we are going to lose. Like, for example, Adam and Eve, who attempted to take from the tree, they did not have anything on the inside to fight. And so, therefore, guess what happened? They failed. They failed because they did not have what was necessary on the inside to resist the temptations because Satan is sneaky. He has many schemes and he wants us to fail to do the things that displease God. And if we don't have something on the inside, then all we have is the flesh and the flesh is going to obey its sinful nature and do the things that God does not want us to do. So, boys and girls, to face the devil and to win over his wicked schemes, we must have power, we must have love, and we must have a sound mind. What must we have, boys and girls? We must have power, we must have love, and we must have a sound mind. When I mean by power, boys and girls, power that comes from the Holy Spirit of God. 
not our own strength. We cannot resist the temptations of the devil with our own strength. The Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And his might comes from the Holy Spirit of God. And so not only must we have power, boys and girls, but we must have love, love for God to obey his commands. God says, if we love him, we will obey his commands. But not only must we have power and love, but we must also have a sound mind, a sound mind that's governed by the Holy Spirit and, and his weapon, which is the word of God. In other words, our minds, boys and girls, but must not be... Um, controlled by the sinful nature or our flesh, but must be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And the weapon of the Holy Spirit that helps us to overcome the schemes of the devil is the word of God. So boys and girls, how are we going to overcome the schemes and the wickedness and the sneakiness and the temptations of the devil? By power, by love, and a sound mind. Amen? Amen. And so the lesson today, boys and girls, we're going to be talking about temptations. Yes, Jesus even was tempted. Yes, Jesus was tempted. And because Satan was successful with Adam and Eve, he tried those same tricks. He tried those same tricks, boys and girls. Tried them on Jesus. And what we are going to do is we're going to watch this, um, this little video clip to see if he succeeded. Amen? Amen. So enjoy this clip, boys and girls, and pay, pay close attention to what Jesus did in trying to overcome the temptations of the devil. And at the end, we will determine whether he succeeded or not. Amen? Amen. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and with their hands they will lift you up, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Once again it is written, You are not to put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their grandeur. And he said to him, I will give you all these things, if you will throw yourself to the ground and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, You are to worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and began ministering to his needs. So boys and girls, guess what the tempter tried to do? The tempter tried, he pulled all out all his stops, boys and girls, trying to get Jesus to fall just like he caused Adam and Eve to fall. Yes, he put all the things out there. He dangled all kinds of things before the presence of Jesus, but none of them worked. None of them worked. Why did they not work? Even though Jesus was weak on the inside, boys and girls, he had something on the inside that caused him to overcome the temptations that the devil dangled in his face. What did he have on the inside? He had power, he had love, and he had a sound mind. And what I mean by that, boys and girls, Jesus had power. That means who led Jesus into the wilderness where and was with him throughout those 40 days? It was the Holy Spirit of God. So that is the source of his power. The source of Jesus' power was the Holy Spirit. Jesus had love. Who was it that Jesus had determined to obey rather than Satan? It was God. In other words, Jesus loved God. And God said, the word says, if we love God, we will obey his commands. And Jesus had a sound mind. For each temptation, what was it that Jesus responded to the Satan with? It 
is written. In other words, Jesus used the word of God to actually defend against Satan. He used the word of God. So boys and girls, he had power, he had love, and he had a sound mind. And guess what? Satan lost. He lost. He left, he left there with no wind under his belt because Jesus was not, maybe not prepared on the outside because he was weak after fasting for 40 days. He was ready on the inside. And so it has to be with us, boys and girls, because here's what happened. Let me give you a definition of temptation, boys and girls. A definition of temptation um, is, 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 is coming from James chapter one, beginning in verse number 14. Let's talk about it for a second. It says, but each of us, when we are tempted, we are tempted when we are dragged away by our own evil desires and enticed. That is what temptation is, boys. We are dragged away by our own evil desires and enticed. And um, sometimes what happens is that we um, we put ourselves in the situation, and sometimes we um, we um, are enticed by someone else being used by Satan. But whatever the reason or what, however it is, boys and girls, we are dragged away. And then what happens, boys and girls, that temptation is now planted into our hearts. It conceives. That means that it is actually in our heart. I really want that. I really want to do that. I really want to try that. I really want to go there. And then eventually, boys and girls, because we're thinking about it over and over again, it gives birth to sin. And guess what? We do it. And when sin is full grown, boys and girls, it gives birth to death. In other words, boys and girls, the tempter who is Satan, the enemy, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Every time that we sin, every time that we fall to a temptation, be it from our own doing or be it from Satan, we are going to lose something. Something inside of us, boys and girls, it dies. It dies. But it doesn't have to be that way, boys and girls. No, it doesn't have to be that way. Let me break down this scripture for, for you, boys and girls, so that you have a clearer understanding. So, boys and girls, from temptation to sin, here's the steps that go from temptation to sin. First thing is that we are dragged away by our own evil desire. Because we have a choice, boys and girls. We can resist. We can say, nope. Not going to have anything to do with it. But what happens is that because of that evil desire, that sin for nature in us, we are dragged away. And then when we'll get, we, we're there, when we're dragged away, boys and girls, that means then that that temptation is now planted into our heart when we're thinking about it over and over and over again. And because we're thinking about it, boys and girls, that means it's sort of like a seed. That temptation is like a seed planted into our heart. If we are watering that seed, that seed is going to produce roots and they're going to bear fruit. And the fruit that it bears is called sin. That's number three. In other words, it gives birth to sin. And then guess what happened, boys and girls? When it gives birth to sin, something inside of us dies. And that's step number four. Sin gives birth to death. Mm, mm, mm. We only lose, boys and girls, when we sin. And the sin comes when we are tempted and we do not resist. And therefore, we find ourselves um, in a situation where we are doing something against the will of God. Oh, that's what Satan wants, boys and girls. That is what Satan wants. So here's what I'm, uh, here's some, here's what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you some instructions, boys and girls. When should we stop to avoid the sin? Should we stop at number one, number two, number three, or number four? Boys and girls, we should stop before even number one. When we see something that is tempting to us, don't think about it. Don't try to um, be curious and investigate it. No, boys and girls, you go the other way. Cut it off, out of sight, out of mind. But if you are not going to, if you if you hang around, boys and girls, you're going to be dragged away because that that desire, that little evil desire in us, is going to pull us away. So, boys and girls, we want to actually cut it off right there, nip it in the bud. Don't think about it or anything along that line. Think about Jesus, boys and girls. When Satan says, "Hey, you got a stone? If you're hungry, turn this stone into bread." Jesus just cut it off right there, right, boys and girls. He said, "Huh, I am really hungry, right?" 
and I do have the power. I can turn this into bread. No, he didn't think about it or anything. He cut it off. And that is what we must do, boys and girls. We must cut it off before it actually drags us into a situation that conceives into our heart, that causes us to sin and causes something on, side, on the inside to be destroyed. In other words, boys and girls, temptation is, is not the same as sin. Even Jesus was tempted, but he cut it off. And that is what we must do, boys and girls. We must not let our guards down or we are going to easily fall into the trap. So what do we do? What steps do we take? We walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are always on our guard. We determine in our hearts that we are going to keep the word of God and do what is right. And we use the word of God to fight those temptations, boys and girls. In other words, if you are tempted to do something that you know is wrong, let the word of God through the Holy Spirit come to your heart and you get out of it. Don't sit there being curious and begin to start investigating because here's what the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8, boys and girls. He said, be alert and be sober because the enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The devil wants to eat you up. And all he's going to do is he's going to look for a door of opportunity, dangle a temptation before you. And if you do not resist it, boys and girls, he's going to eat you alive. But what the word of God tells us to do, resist him right then and there. Don't sit there investigating or anything. Resist right there immediately and then standing firm in the faith, boys and girls, because you know that the family of believers throughout the whole world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. We all are going through temptations, boys and girls. We are tempted every day, every moment of our lives. But what we must do, boys and girls, is that we must resist. We must be, we must be ready. For if we are not ready, we fall in the trap over and over and over again. Boys and girls, when I was in the ninth grade, I'm going to share a quick little testimony. One of my favorite candies was Kit Kat. When I was in that, I never had any money, boys and girls. So guess what happened? Because my evil desire, and I had that desire to actually be, to, to, to have a Kit Kat, even when I didn't have money, guess what I did? I stole. Yes, I went and took something that did not belong to me. And so I didn't, and, 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 and what happened is that first it started with just in my mind that I didn't have any money, but I really was hungry for this Kit Kat. And so what happened then, after they conceived into my heart, I tried to figure out how can I get it? And so what happened is that now it's in my heart and then it produced that sin. In other words, that is in my heart. And I've been thinking about it a long time. I went into the store and when I went into the store, guess what I did? I took it. What is that called, boys and girls? That is called stealing. But then what happened? I got caught. Mm, mm, mm. So something actually bad happened because of me not actually resisting that temptation, but yielding to that temptation. And I got caught. Did I lose anything? Yes. It destroyed my reputation. It just and, and, and I was kicked out of the store, never to come back to the store again. It destroyed. Sin destroys boys and girls. Sin destroys. So what did I have to do? I began to change, boys and girls. Even in the ninth grade, what I began to start doing, I began to go and start going to church. I went to a hole in this church. And when I went to this hole in this church, boys and girls, they were strict. Yes, they were strict, boys and girls. And I definitely didn't know, want them to know about the, my past and some of the things that I had done in the, in the past. And so here's what I did, boys and girls. Now that I've fallen in love with God, now that the Holy Spirit is inside of me, and what I did from that point forward, boys and girls, when I was tempted to actually go to the store, um, to tempted to have a Kit Kat or whatnot, Instead of me actually going to the store, I resisted right then and there. I said, no, the devil is a liar. If I don't have no money, I'm definitely not going into a store. And I was able to overcome by resisting before it conceived in my heart to produce that sin that caused me to go still. Resisted, resisted, resisted. And I've been resisting ever since, boys and girls, not just for the Kit Kat, but for anything that I know that does not belong to me. Leave it alone. Cut it off right then and there. Because if I didn't, then what's going to happen is going to enter into my heart and cause me to sin against God. Some things get by, but the majority of the things don't because my goal is to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. I love God and I want to keep his commandments. And he has given me the spirit and his word inside of me so that I can fight that fight 
when the tempter, the devil, or even when I try to move away from doing right and be dragged away into a temptation or to fulfill an e evil desire. I don't want it. And so I resist it, resist it, resist it. And that is what God is desiring for each one of us, boys and girls, because we are going to face temptations on a daily basis. But to overcome, we and to receive the victory, we need the Holy Spirit of God. Boys and girls, the Holy Spirit of God, he saved my life. I didn't want to go to jail. I didn't want to find myself in detention or doing something. I didn't want to have a record or whatnot. And it was when I began to start going to church, listening to the word, desiring to do what is the will of God in my life, that saved my life. So when the temptation came, boys and girls, I said, no, I'm getting out of the situation as fast as I can. And that is what I want to encourage you to do too, boys and girls. Get out of the situations. Don't hang around. Don't be curious. Don't get cocky and prideful and say, oh, I can resist it. Boys and girls, the devil is a tricky, he's just conniving. And he can put some things before you and you thought that you could resist. No, you didn't. And you find yourself destroyed, be it your reputation, be it um, your, um, even some, some people actually find themselves dying because they thought they could resist the temptation, but they couldn't. And they find themselves doing something that is destructive to their physical bodies and they die. We don't want that to be a one of thing, one thing, something that happens with you. So please, boys and girls, when the temptation comes, and they will come every single day, resist before you try to be before you are dragged to, into it. Resist it right there. Says sin for nature. Say body, you are a lie. I am not going to even try it and get out of the situation. Don't be curious. Don't try to investigate it. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. I pray that you will resist so that you can go all out being all that God has called and purposed for you to be. Don't be a puppet for the devil. Don't be a puppet for the devil. And the help that you need is the Holy Spirit of God. And how do we receive the Holy Spirit of God? It's by putting our faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and as Lord. Boys and girls, I know each week we pray the same prayer. And the purpose of this prayer, boys and girls, is not just for you to just um, hear it. But sometimes, boys and girls, through repetition, this prayer is entering into your heart. So because you may have it going on, but that may be your neighbor or someone else who does not have it going on, who does not have that relationship with God. So, boys and girls, if you are one of those who do have that relationship, repeat this prayer after me anyway. And if you don't have the relationship with God, you don't have the you don't have a chance because the Holy Spirit is not in you. So we have a chance because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. But if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you will always be a puppet of the devil. So when a temptation comes, you're going to fall every single time. So pray this prayer that God will not only bring you a part of his family, but stamp you with his Holy Spirit so you will have power to overcome any and every temptation that comes your way. Amen. Amen. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I am a sinner. I have done some bad things in my life. And I understand that my sin separates me from you. But I believe that you love me and that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for all my sins. I believe that Jesus was buried and he rose again. Please forgive me of my sins. Now I ask Jesus to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life, to be my master, to be my ruler, to be my king. I give my heart to Jesus Christ. I thank you, God, for saving my soul by cleansing my soul with the blood of Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross 
for all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Boys and girls, if you said that prayer with all your heart, you are now a part of the family of God. And you now have stamped in your heart the Holy Spirit of God that gives you that power that you need to say yes to what is right and no to what is wrong. Resisting the temptations of the devil and resisting even those temptations that come from our own sinful nature so that we can be a pleasing vessel unto God to be used by him to bring others to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, God bless you. May God keep you and may you continue to strive, walking in the Holy Spirit and being ready for each and every temptation that comes your way. Amen. Amen.